Okay, so question number one. The temperature of the inside and outside composite wall of a room are 25 and 45 respectively. So the first thing I did when I was solving this is, okay, so this is outside temperature, this is the inside temperature. The composite wall from the outside inside is concrete, cork board, and wood. So the outside is the one facing the concrete, which is the 15 centimeters. So I drew here concrete, cork board, and what am I doing? Wood, right? So therefore, if the concrete is on the outside, so I'm going to already go ahead and do, okay, this is outside over here, and outside I wrote down that's 45, so this is 45 Celsius, which means by elimination, this is inside, and therefore this is the 25 degrees Celsius. Um, with the corresponding thermal conductivities given as 0 0.76, uh, 0 0.04, and 0.15. Uh, one, calculate the heat flux transfer, uh, sorry, the heat transfer flux across the wall. So number one is asking us to calculate lower Q, right? Lower case Q. Two, determine the temperature at the interface between the wood and the cork board. So this is the cork board, this is the wood, so therefore it's asking us what is the temperature right there. So we're going to call that T1. And number three, determine the temperature at the interface between the cork board and the concrete. So it's going to be this other guy here, which I'm going to go ahead and call T2. All right, so concrete on this side here, wood on this side here, and then the cork board in the middle. No curveballs here, no, no tricks, just solving the problem like we do in our classes. C2. Okay, first things first, we know heat's gonna flow from hot to cold. We don't think about that anymore, it's in our blood. So I can draw a equivalent circuit, which is gonna have the 25 here. Then we're gonna have a resistance due to the wood, a conductive resistance. Then we're gonna have a resistance due to the cork board, another conductive one, a resistance due to the concrete, another conductive one, and then I can finally reach the outside at 45 Celsius. This is what I call T1, this is what I called T2. The other thing that we can um, be sure of is that there will be three resistances, and these three resistances um, are due to conduction because of the material there, in the case of cork board, the concrete, and the wood. I'm going to go ahead and call them, um, I'll do RA, RB, and RC in the distance, respecting the distance that Q is going, right? And just for, you know, to keep it nice and consistent, I'm going to put my arrow here to remind myself that I know for sure Q is going in this direction. And that's why I said A, R, A, R, B, and R, C. Cool. So what do we do now? Well, the game plan is if I want to find the heat flux, all I need to do is find out what's the equivalent resistance of these three here, if I had only a single one, and then find what is the heat going through, because I am 100% sure that the heat going through um, this guy is the same going this, through this guy, which is the same going through this, this guy, because it's a system in series, right? So no surprises there. So we're going to calculate R, A, R, B, R, C. And once we do that, we're going to sum them all up. And once we do that, we're just going to divide uh, the difference in temperature by the sum of resistances. And we should be good to go. So my RA is going to be my X divided by my K and my area. We know our X to be uh, 15 centimeters. So that's 0.15 meters or 15 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. Our K was given as 0 0.76. So 0 0.76. And then our area, we don't know, and then we have that same deal as before. We can say the area is one, or we can carry the area with us. It's up to you guys. I'm going to go ahead and say area is one meter squared. I'm going to put this in red over here so that I'm reminded of that, and I'm actually going to point arrows as I'm solving to remind me of that. But I'll also do quickly at the end the other way around, just for the people who did it another way. Okay, um, this gave me about 1.97 approximately. 1. Point, I'm sorry, 0.197. And that would be Kelvin per watts in the units. However, I just need to remind myself that this is actually a, assuming a one meter squared area. My RB, same thing. I'm going to do XKA. My X is the um, 20 centimeters. Oh, by the way, nothing, we haven't done any mistake, but by the way, we know before we even start that this is going to be, you know, the bulk of the resistance, right? This is where the, the magic happens. Because not only is the, this is the thickest part, but it has the smallest conductivity by far. So we expect our, you know, the, the bulk of our resistance to be on the second resistance here. And if we don't get in our calculations, there's something wrong as we're going through this. So this is 0 0.25 meters or 25 times 10 to the minus 2. My 
k is 0 0.04 and my uh, area I'm assuming to be 1. So this gave me 5 exactly. And this same thing, Kelvin per watt, but we need to remind ourselves that we're doing this oh, as we go along the way. And then my RC, let's put it here in the corner, same idea, but now I have 2.5, so it's 2.5, is it? 2.5, yeah, 2.5 centimeters, so times 10 to the minus 2. And I'm dividing that by my 0.15, which is a K for the wood. And once again, 1 as per our assumption. So this gives me about point, approximately 0.167. Same thing, Kelvin per watts, with the caveat that is related to this. All right? So now, because it's in series, and it's probably good practice for you to, you know, write something like this because in series, because then you show that you know that you're only summing it up because the system is in series, then you can do this and you sum them up. And by the way, yeah, definitely this is five, this is no point two and point two. So all good, the bulk is indeed in the middle, right? And what we get here is five point, what did I get? Five point three six four. Five point three six four. Yeah, that's good enough. And then the same caveat, right? This is Kelvin per watts, except it's related to that one. We just squared it. Cool. So now that we did, you know, the hard work, we can finish it off saying that, okay, my Q, I know my Q is related to the difference in temperature, what's driving my heat to happen, divided by what's trying to stop it, the resistance, right? So in this case here, 45 minus the 25 divided by 5.364. So we'll go four, um, which gave me 3.7283, and it keeps going. So let's go ahead and round that up to 3.73. And then that's watts per what? Per nothing, right? Per just watts. And there, and a lot of people would stop here, and that would be the mistake because you know we're calculating this as watts, but in reality, because of all those areas we put before, let's pull this guy back up here. We're calculating this in respect to one meter squared. So this is actually per meter squared. So in reality, what we're calculating is lowercase q, which is 3.73, and that's watts per meter squared, and this is indeed our answer, right? Know that if you stopped here, that would be, you know, incorrect, because what you're calculating is in watts, but you know this is only watts for one meter squared. If we double that area, we're going to have double the amount of heat going through. The other way of doing this is, you know, like I said, you can carry the area as you go as you're going through the, the, the process, you're carrying the area, and then what would happen is, once you get to this point here, when you get to this point here, what you would have in reality is not that, but this over area. Let me leave this there. All right, so you have 5.364 divided by the, the area in question, and then when we go and apply Q equals delta T divided by the sum of the resistances, what I'll do is then I'll substitute where I have my R, I'll substitute this guy, right? delta t. And then obviously this is the same thing as delta t times the area divided by 5.364. And at this point in time what we do is, okay, let me now divide you know, both sides of the equation. Let me divide this guy by the area and this guy by the area. What ends up happening is that this guy becomes q over a, which is indeed the same thing as heat flux. And on that side there we have area divided by area. Those areas go away. And we just, we're left with the delta t divided by the 5.364. And obviously we get the same answer, 3.73. Okay, so whatever rocks your boat, both are 100% correct. It's whatever you find easier to follow along. That is part one. Now for part two. Part two, we're interested in this, in finding the temperatures here between, between our resistances. So what we want to do is, this is part two. In part two, we're trying to find T1, right? So there we have two options here. We can go from our 25 and down to our T1 and just consider one resistance, or we can go from our T1 down to our 45 uh, ah, and consider two resistances, right? Obviously I'll choose this one, simpler, last place to make mistakes. If I'm doing an exam and I actually have time, I'll just, I'll do both or I'll come back to this afterwards and check. We are 100% sure T1 is greater than 25, right? We know that already. We don't have any doubts about that because we know where our uh, heat is flowing. So this is just going to be the, the, um, the energy we found times the um, resistance that we found. In this case, resistance C. So in other words, my T1 is just 25 plus 
my 3.73 time joint resistance C, which was one point, what was it? 1.67. 0 0.167. 0 0.167. And this gives us 0 0.62, right? So this is this difference here is just 0 0.62. Difference in temperature in Kelvin or Celsius. In this case, we're doing Celsius because we chose to do Celsius here, which means my T1 is simply the 25.62 degrees Celsius. And that is our answer for part two. Again, no curveballs, straightforward, solving the problem. Last, what is T2? Well, exactly the same thing, no changes there. Now I have more options because now I can calculate my T2 by relating T1 and T2 and only considering resistance B. I can do from T2 to 45 and only consider resistance A or I can do T2 for 25 and consider the sum of C and B. All the same result. Interestingly, right, we know the bulk of the thermal resistance is on this guy here. So just like we found 25, the T1 to be very close to 25, I'm expecting to find my T2 to be very close to 45, right? Because we know the actual decrease in temperature is gonna happen as it's going from um, T2 to T3, uh, to T1, sorry. So let me go ahead and do this one here. But again, you can do whatever, okay? Again, I'm 100% sure 45 is greater than T2. I don't have doubts and you don't have either. So this is 45 minus T2. And this has to be equal to the Q that we found times the RA. So that means that my difference in temperature will just be the 3.73 times RA. RA was 0.197. So again, a tiny difference in temperature. Uh, I got 0.73 in the difference in temperature, so 45 minus T2 equals 0.73. So that means that my T2 is just 45 minus the 0.73, which means my T2 is just 44.27 degrees Celsius, and that is it. Okay, so very straightforward question to solve. Uh, very straightforward uh, ways to get answers. Again, the 25, very close to the 25, 25.62, very close to 25. The 44.27, very close to the 45, and what we expect here is, we don't expect, we actually know now, that actually the RB is where the bulk of the thermal resistance is, and we actually drop from 44.727 all the way to 25.62, right? So indeed, that's where it happens. Do you have, oh, by the way, one last thing just to mention, right? When we're doing this, right? if you look at the units, if you're considering one meter squared for both, it's straightforward. If you're considering, if you're carrying the A with you, you're gonna have a both multiplying and dividing, which means that they get go away anyhow, right? So unit-wise, it's still consistent. Do you guys have any questions on this or did you have any problems when solving this?